Days follow nights and opportunity follows difficulty. You have to get good at planting in the spring or begging in the fall. My name is Shanae Murray, and today we're going to be talking about having a growth mindset for business owners. I have Sean Carr here today. He's my business partner. And maybe introduce yourself a little bit, Sean Carr, before we start. Absolutely. I am involved in a few business ventures, so I'm really looking forward to our conversation. I wanted to talk about something specific today, not just general growth mindset. Starting with the overarching phrase that we often hear, which is, in business, if you're not growing, you're dying. There's a certain complacency that I see with a lot of business owners that they don't take that phrase as seriously as they should. And they don't understand that if they don't maintain a certain level of growth year after year at minimum, then their business is technically currently dying. It's also underestimated that if your business is stagnant or dying, that if you don't take massive action to basically get it out of the mud, with the movement of technology and other players coming into the market, it's going to be hard to do so the longer that you wait. Do you agree with that phrase, Shankar, that in business, if you're not growing, you're dying? A hundred percent, I agree with it. And I would point out that it can apply to so many dimensions of what applies to your business. So there's, of course, the numbers, the revenue, but then there is also you as a business owner, your team, your processes, your research and development. We are currently in a phase in business where with the advent and emergence of AI, if we don't find ways to include that in our businesses, we get ourselves in a very dangerous zone where we might be completely replaced in the coming months. I want to be very practical about this conversation because I feel like most conversations about growth mindset assume that you can be in business without one, which I think is ironic. To accept the fact that it's basically non-optional if you're in business and you plan to succeed in your business. That's number one. Number two, that said, then what can you actually do in a practical way to increase the probability of that growth? And one of the best things that I've heard is by a gentleman named Robin Sharma. And he wrote the book, The 5 AM Club. He's also a coach to billionaires. And he came up with something called the 9091 rule. This is going to be a very practical thing that you can do within the next 90 days to increase the likelihood of growing your business. For the next 90 days, you will spend the first 90 minutes of your workday on the one most important thing that you could focus on to grow your business. Now, where I think most business owners may go astray with something like the 90-91 rule is that they may not choose the right one thing. They may choose the one thing that is most comfortable for them or the one thing that they're already doing, or the one thing that is not associated with any risk, or the one thing that uh, will lead to incremental growth, but not a real impact, be it within their business or even within their industry. And so when you choose this one thing, it should be what he calls an absolute game changer. So it could be that over the next 90 days, in the first 90 minutes of your work, you're developing a new product, doubling down on building your personal brand, creating videos that could be leveraged as assets for your personal brand in the future and in your business. Whatever that one thing is, it's important to choose something that is a little bit outside of your comfort zone and that will lead to long-term leverage. And so, Shankar, what's your process in maybe choosing this one thing? Do you also see that people may not choose the right one thing? I see that a lot. And process is really no the numbers. And that is where a lot of people in the first place, they get so busy working in the trenches of their own business that they never stop and take a high-level view at what are the different pathways that lead to my top 20% clients. 
So that requires understanding what is the message and then what is the funnel and what are the key pressure points. And then you as a business owner need to understand, okay, in all of those points of contact, where can I and where do I want to contribute my highest, depending on what your business is, that, that might be different things, but for a lot of businesses, it is the first point of contact in public relations and visibility online, the first initial message. And that, and that uh, requires becoming very eloquent and conversational about the core of your business in a way where people who are a little bit removed from what you are doing understand what you're talking about. And that is essentially the art of communication. And then that leads into being able to speak off the cuff, either in an audio room or on video. And again, always speaking the language of the audience, not necessarily the language of the expert. One of the resistances that I see, even after you know what it is, is that people get stuck in the way that their business is operating now, or they may feel like their schedule can't be moved around, and so they discard it completely. So if you're a coach and you have meetings all over the place, you're at the stage of your business where you probably have enough one-on-ones, but you probably should be charging more and your schedule is getting a little bit insane, then the question becomes, how can you design your schedule to include that the first 90 minutes of your workday are spent on that one thing that can make the biggest impact for your business over the next 90 days? For me, that was not taking client meetings early in the morning. And that's something that I have actually been doing this entire year so far. Prior, I would do morning meetings. Now the first 90 minutes of my workday is not a client meeting. And it took a little bit of a process. It took having to set firm boundaries. It took having to redesign my schedule to be afternoon meetings. It took having to redesign days. That has allowed us to create and to double down on the free videos that we create to reach the masses that are leveraged into multiple assets for the business that reach the result that we want to reach. In the beginning, you may have to sacrifice something up front, but I think that thinking about your business in 90 days and knowing that if nothing changes, then you're going to be probably in a worse position than where you're at is important to think about. And as we go into the second half of the year, I want you to understand that everything that you do between now and October will determine the type of Christmas you have with your family, the type of new year you have with your family, the type of Q1 of next year. What you do during the next 90 days will plant the seeds of all those deals that you will or will not get before the year closes. I think this is something that a lot of people underestimate. October comes around and they're like, oh, I'm going to start revving it up for December and it's too late. The importance right now of understanding what is going on in the general landscape and recognizing the adjustments that you need to make in order to stay on the map, that is what we all need to pay attention to. Obviously, building communities and building an authentic voice online specifically is very important. I read yesterday in Alex Ramos's book that having a steady flow of leads is super essential because the great thing with having a lot of leads is that your business cannot yet be optimal and can be non-optimal and you will still make money because you have a good flow of leads. And creating a good flow of leads means recognizing what works right now. We are in times and we've been preaching about this for the better part of two years, but it is now truer than ever. There's all AI that keeps getting better and better. We need to learn how to make it our partner in really doing everything that we need to do. That means internally and the workflows inside of our businesses but also in how we gain exposure and how we spread the word. And that is focusing on the next 90 days, what you'll do 
is the first 90 minutes of your workday will be focused on one thing that will make the biggest impact in your business. And Shankar keeps referring to social media lead, but that may not be the one thing that can make the biggest impact in your role in your business. If, for example, you're part of a team and you're a thumbnail designer, maybe it's just practicing creating and designing or running a B test for different thumbnails. Maybe if you're not on the front side of your team and let's say that you're in product, maybe it's just improving the product over the next 90 days, improving the automations, making the emails more personalized, ensuring that your students or your coaching clients are actually watching the videos that you have in some portal or actually showing up to the trainings that you're hosting. And I've talked to several billionaires and really the thing that even one of them just directly told me was the biggest difference between someone like him and someone that's just semi-successful or someone that gets really hurt by changes in environments or seasons is that the billionaire expects different seasons. They don't expect things to constantly go up. up. They see success like a heartbeat. And so if you look at the four major life lessons that he has to learn. So the first is learning how to handle the winters, the nights and the recessions. And you learn that because you prepare in spring and in the summer. The winters won't change, but you can. So you don't wish for less problems. You work towards more skills. And that's why it's important to schedule off and to really dedicate the first 90 minutes of your workday to the one skill that is going to make the biggest difference in your business over the next 90 days. So don't wish for less problems, wish for more skills. You're going to learn to take advantage of the spring. People are on summer vacation, hee-haw, and then in the winter they'll be complaining. But the people that plant the seeds now and put in the work, they'll be smiling through the winter. So you want to take advantage of the spring because you accept that you can't change it. Days follow nights and opportunity follows difficulty. You have to get good at planting in the spring or begging in the fall. Life is short. Don't just let the springs pass. Learn how to protect your crops all summer. All good will be attacked and every garden gets invaded. If you think of yourself as like that garden or your business as the garden, Think of every distraction as the attack. All of the people that want to get on your calendar for no reason to ask you for something, that's a distraction. And you're going to choose one or the other. All good will be attacked and every garden invaded. Prevent the intruders from taking all the good you start. And that's only possible if you really stay focused and become the best at whatever skill. Learn to reap come harvest time without complaint. And this is basically enjoy yourself a little bit at the right time and reap without apology when you do well. And I think that these lessons from Jim Rohn are very telling and they're timeless principles. These are just some ways for you to understand that you're either going to do the work now and have a phenomenal winter or you're going to regret it later. When you're a business owner, growth mindset is not really optional because if you're not growing, you're dying.